Tuesday comes the unrated DVD that crosses the line. Hey, what you doing? Just trying to grab some nuts. And never comes back. Let me give you a demonstration. With hours of outrageous bonus features, Scary Movie 4. Buy the unrated DVD this Tuesday. Remember that comedian Ant? Yeah. He was a gay guy. He used to do a joke. I don't know. It was like it was back when gay comedy was, and it's that's still kind of what it is, where a gay guy would just be like, what if they sent me to Al-Qaeda? And like yeah. the audience would be like, yeah, that would be crazy. Yeah. What if <laughs> or that would be, be awesome. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. the Steve Harvey bit about going to Iraq, right? No, what is it? Dude, first of all, Steve Harvey, one of probably top five best comics of all time. He's very funny. He's hilarious. One of the funniest people. And what makes him so funny is he has like the, well, not really the worst takes. I mean, it's like, but some of them are fucking, I mean, it's just. They're unique. Yeah. So his, his thing about the Iraq war is he's like, he's like, send me over there. Shit. You send me there on a Tuesday, the war will be over on a Friday. Okay. <laughs> Steve is shooting everybody <laughs> he's like he's like the women the children i don't give a shit it's like the women the baby i'm gonna shoot the baby the baby come up ah, la, la, la. Ka, 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 ka. Lord steve dunn shot the baby <laughs> He's describing war crimes. I mean, it's fucking hilarious. Do you ever watch him on um, Family Feud? He's yeah. so condescending. Mm. Like, if you say something stupid, he looks at you like you're a fucking mm -hmm. asshole. Well, yeah, my favorite part about Family Feud is, like, all of, like half the questions are suggestive. So, like, you know, I mean, like, I used to, it's like a bit or whatever. But, so, you know, I mean, Steve, Steve will be like, um, okay, we surveyed 100 people. Name something that you put in your mouth and suck on until it gets hard. And then, <laughs> like, somebody will be like, a, a penis, you know? And then he's like, yeah. <laughs> he looks at the camera. <laughs> somebody pray for this child. <laughs> somebody, <laughs> somebody pray for this damn fool that done lost their mind. <laughs> Well, I don't really know what else the answer would be on that. <laughs> he's been doing that show for like a long, a long time. Yeah, he's uh, he's been a host for a minute now. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Exhibit A. This video proves the defendant was engaged in reckless street racing, crashing, destruction of property, and something so twisted, it has no name. <laughs> Flat out's back to blow everything else off the track. Take on your friends or compete online with new souped up muscle cars to race and wreck. Plus, all new driver thrashing bonus games. Young man, what you did is awesome. Yeah. Flat out two, same full throttle action, way more destruction. Rated T for team. Inspired by a true story, it began as an incredible challenge. Philadelphia Eagles will hold open tryouts. You got a tryout this weekend. It inspired an impossible dream. Even if you're down there for one hour, you're down there. It became one man's extraordinary journey. Excuse me. Spell wrong. Nothing personal. Does it really matter? It's never too late. Which player college ball? I didn't play college ball. To fight for your dream. Invincible, inspired by the incredible true story, Ready PG.
Yaris. From Toyota. A freak accident. Give me your hand! A call for help. My little girl has been taken. I'll find her. An island. This is private property. Where one man's search. Where is this girl? Will come to an end. Daddy. Hey! Nicholas Cage. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, September 1st. Yeah, who was the host before him? No, no, that, uh, the, Drew Carey was hosting The Price is Right. Um, not uh, yeah. not Family Feud. Yeah, Family Feud... Uh, it kind of sucks. It's 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 a uh, it's a pretty easy show to follow because I watch it with my kids sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's kind of your kid easy. wants to watch Family Feud. You don't think that that's bad for him? No, no, not at all. He did. I he Family did ask me. Feuding? I showed him a Jim Gaffigan special, thinking yeah. that Jim Gaffigan's a clean comedian. Yeah, Jim Gaffigan's filthy. If He's you're showing it to a seven year old. Yeah. yeah. Is Bottle Jim Gaffigan's really? Is he really filthy? You ever try to put a bottle of water in a woman's pussy? <laughs> I was getting my ass eaten and yeah. I was hungry. Yeah. Oh my God. Did he just getting, kill a hooker? I guess I'll get fucked in my ass. I guess I'll <laughs> yeah, get he, no, he, my ass at the bus station. He just talks about like uh, that first special. He mentioned prostitution, uh, he mentioned sex. Mm -hmm. So I don't well, like you I, did, you, the level of G that you need to be. I mean, you can't show your son really any comedian. Yeah. I thought I well I thought I'd be able to show him a couple. I thought I was gonna show him Gaffigan and I showed him uh what's his name? Brian Regan. I showed him a little bit of Nate. Okay. Uh, then I showed him then I showed him Big J. Yeah. Yeah. Um but yeah, it was uh what? I mean, it's so funny if, if James like ends up loving stand up and then he finally sees like your stand up when he's like fifteen. And it's like that episode of The Simpsons where Marge finds out his her 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 his her dad's a stewardess and not an airline pilot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah your son just hates you forever <laughs> because he watches your I, set. Well, that's I, also the I'm part of me. I'm finally gonna see my daddy's stand up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a part of me that uh, as well because like we shelter him so much, we don't let him watch like any anything dirty, anything suggestive, and then one day he's just gonna go on to the internet and find what I do. And yeah. it's going to break his heart. Mm -hmm. He's just going to be sitting there one day when you walk in silently and you're like, hey, buddy, what's up? And he's just going to look up and you go, you, you do a bit about ghost rape. <laughs> <laughs> you do a That's bit about I, somebody getting fingered by a ghost. Are you That's serious? With, with my son, I'm going to be even more weird and hardcore in the household prior to his discovery of the Internet. Yeah. So it's yeah. a step down. Come town's a relief when he finds yeah. that. When he finds that, 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 that his father has had a sense of humor at one point. Yeah. Before he became a humorless garage man that only <laughs> speaks to his son in Mandarin Chinese, which yeah. the, son never, <laughs> the son had no reinforcement of. Outside, yeah, outside, outside of maybe four or five sentences from his father a day, and the rest of his yeah. life is in English. So he's never learned Chinese. He's like, I never understood why my father spoke Mandarin. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah, but I respected the man. Go back in the garage. He's coming in, completely nude in sandals, getting a Capri Sun from the refrigerator, smoking a Marlboro Light. Yeah. My pretty little movie star, how sweet you are from near or far, just like a movie star. Ooh, are you the number one movie queen? Did I see you in a magazine? Are you someone got a 
ones to talk about. Am I as lucky as all get out? Introducing Taco Bell's new Nacho Crunch Grilled Stuffed Burrito. Authentic carne asada steak, warm nacho cheese sauce, and crunchy tortilla strips. Wrapped up and grilled to go anywhere. For the burrito that's fun to crunch, think outside the bun. Nothing brings out the kid in you like the scrumptious combination of milk chocolate and airy crispies. Nestle Crunch, for the kid in you. Meet Nancy a widow without a care. She deals with neighbors with grace and flair. When Nancy knocks, she's smiling like this. What you want is what she's got. We're the night to spare. Cause she's Nancy. Suburban like Nancy. And you'll see. She talks a lot. She yells a lot. And now she even sells some pot. It's Nancy. Dealing weed on the street. Weeds, an all new season only on Showtime. Adult Swim Fix. Who did this to my freaking car? Free full-length episodes for free. Thank you, what, Jesus? Only on AdultSwim.com. Does what have what? See entire seasons of your favorite shows for free. <laughs> and free new free episodes before they hit air. Adult Swim Fix. Free only on FreeAdultSwim.free. Want to put a smile on your face every day? Grab your cell phone and send the text message COMIC24 to number 43333 and get the best, funniest, and most original jokes on your cell phone every day. Send the text message COMIC24 to number 43333. And starting right now, you'll be a hot comedian. Surprise your friends with funny jokes. You'll be in stitches all day. Send the text message COMIC24 to number 43333 and start each day with a belly laugh. I don't know what the solution is to that. So do I fucking, do I, you know, start exposing my son to more things like that now? How no. old is he? He's seven. He's seven. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I can't remember seven really. I feel like that's early enough. Really? Like once, yeah. Once you get to like eight, nine, then it's like, you're basically, you can experience the world in its entirety. I think. I started having memories at five. I think that was because I started going yeah. to kindergarten. I have, I have memories. They were, but yeah. like, but I mean, like being in like first and second grade, like I was still like my mom gave me like Metamucil before school in second grade, and I shit my pants the entire day. Like that was the kind of thing that was happening still in second grade. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, can you like imagine just shitting your pants for an entire day as like? A, Why did she give you Metamucil? I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm blaming it on her, and I just thought it was like Tang or something. I can't remember. Okay. I just remember that Metamucil <laughs> was the reason that I was now shitting myself again at fucking, you know, what is that? Seven? That's probably seven. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a rough day. Yeah. It was awful. Did the kids notice or you were just shitting in the bathroom? I, you know what? Get this. I shit in my pants and then, but it was a solid turd and I was able to go back into the cubby area and dump it on the floor out of my pants. And, okay. And then whatever poor janitor. <laughs> Well, I like to imagine Steve Harvey on the fantasy. <laughs> Just being like, Lord, <laughs> somebody pray for this damn child. Pray for this fool. Somebody done pray for this damn fool of a child. Done le left a turd right in the cubby area. <laughs> Oh, shit. Yeah, dude. I, um, no, I, I mean, I've never had to deal with that at school. There was a girl I remember in the sixth grade. This really, she was already fucking fat and gross. I won't say her name because I feel so bad for this girl. Dude, it was the sixth grade and you know, she never just not say her name because it would be indecent to do so. No, no, no. I feel, I feel bad. This girl's life, this ruined her life. Yeah. How do you know right, she's not doing great right now? She, if she didn't kill herself, I'd be surprised. Because this girl was already like 260 pounds in the sixth grade. She's a big fat girl. There's always one skin. girl that's like 400, that's like very fat. It was crazy. She's a big yeah. girl, okay? 
and you know, nice enough girl, but very you nerdy. How much that sucks to be the fattest girl in school. Yeah. Not just a girl with weight problems. <laughs> <laughs> it was a girl. You the get so fat. Girl. There was one girl we grew up with where literally you get so fat, your head just keeps going like this all day. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like bouncing off your fat. It's crazy. Yeah. Like a Funko yeah. Pop. Yeah. That's literally this girl named Jennifer. She was 600 pounds and she would just be like, <laughs> it was there. And they just like, <laughs> she had a, she had like, they had to walk her from class to class and she had like this big thing of water. And she would just sit in a class and her head would be like going like this. And I'm like, what is she getting out of this? Like, there yeah. should be an alternative method to teach her. Like, there's no, it's not like she's going to graduate and get like a regular job. There was a, so this girl, she was in the classroom and then I don't remember who the kid was, but it was a fucking dickhead of a kid. He just raised his hand. I don't think he was even trying to be mean, but he just raised his hand. And then he points at the girl and he goes, hey, something's leaking from her seat. And this girl, this big fat animal was just pissing her pants mm -hmm. at her desk. And I think she was just too shy to ask to go to the bathroom. This is how bad this girl's life was. She had too much anxiety to even ask to go to the bathroom, which resulted in her pissing at her desk, which then resulted in a kid pointing it out to the entire classroom. It was, an, I mean, this girl started crying, sobbing. She ran, she didn't come to school again for a week. Yeah, that's rough. What kind of school were you uh, attending? This was a uh, uh, auto repair. Yeah. Were you, yeah. Were you in a regular class or were you in like a special class? Do you think I was in a special class, Tim? Well, no, yeah. I'm just asking because I mean, sometimes the fat girl would go into in special. Like class. An, yeah, like an emotional problems class. Yeah. Sort of like it was a, a fat retorted girl that pissed her pants. All right, that is a, a good clue. A Burger King yeah. kid club sort of deal. <laughs> Louis is it? like, and then this other guy in my class was 17 and uh, he just yeah. gotten out of jail. Yeah, there was a guy that was 26 and his name was Esteban. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and we were all learning English. It yeah. was very, very hard for that fat girl. Pleasure you want, protection you trust. It's ready. Introducing Gillette Fusion Hydrogel. Fusion's hydrating emollients and lubricants form an invisible layer that protects your skin from the first stroke to the last, adding more comfort to your shave. Gillette Fusion Hydrogel. What was that? Jim, it's your lunch. You've had a hamburger three times this week. You're in a lunch rut. You need help. KFC's Fiery Buffalo Boneless Wings. They're hot. They're different. You're welcome. Bust the blandness with Fiery Buffalo Boneless Wings at KFC. Get 100% breast meat boneless wings dipped in our fiery buffalo sauce. Try six for $2.99 or 18 for $8.79. Also available in honey barbecue flavor. No bones, all flavor at KFC. Tim, hey. How did she get home? Man, I was so high, I didn't... Are we cool? Tim, you know me, that's not me. Scary Movie 4, you saw it once. Oh my God, what's wrong? Wrong foot, mother. Now, saw it again. With footage too scary for theaters. Kobe? Ah! Scary Movie 4, buy the unrated DVD this Tuesday. Did you, see the, did you see the shit today where they had those fucking gay-ass blue angels fly over the city? Yeah, it was the stupidest <laughs> fucking thing. <laughs> to make us feel better? Like, what are we, yeah. what are we literally three years old? <laughs> yeah. Like, 
Oh, look at that airplane. Oh, there come airplane. Yeah. It's like the Blue Angels also appeal to the age bracket that's already excited by fire trucks and ambulances anyways. Yeah. Like the, the, Blue Angels appeal to guys in Long Island who've never served in the military. <laughs> yeah, I know. Who have American flag profile pictures on Facebook who dragged their family out to Jones Beach to watch the Blue Angels and talk about like, and they jumble up all the wars. They don't even know what wars <laughs> what. Yeah, right. And it's just, that's exactly who the Blue Angels is for. Never mind. What, the are, what are the Blue Angels? This is the like a. a, a it's, it's it's like the, if you're good enough at being a pilot, they let you just do plane dancing. <laughs> you don't have to fucking you, like that. You can you can be like you know the movie Top Gun is like just like brimming with like homoerotic you know like tension. Yeah. It's mm. like imagine that you like you know just like dropped like something in that water to cause yeah. like a super reaction. And then yeah. the team of Blue Angels, which are the Navy yeah. pilots that whose job is to just go like fly over stadiums and do tricks with each other, and then yeah. hit, and then hit the showers for what? Yeah, for, and they're doing it to support COVID. It's it, the elite from the city. It's just jets. I mean, it's literally just five planes. You look up in the air, and there's five planes flying together. But they're the it, only people causing uh, pollution right now. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's yeah. the elite gay unit of the Navy. Yeah. And none of their fans can be tall back because it would ruin it. But yeah. it's the elite gay unit. It's guys that can't be trusted to bomb a village because they get gay about it and maybe right. not do it. Right. But they don't mind putting on a show, uh, you know, on top of the uh you know, whatever uh, fucking Nassau Coliseum. Right. The further you get into the Navy, like the more elite the categories are, the gayer it gets. I mean, yeah, that's just like, become, yeah. The guy that shot Bin Laden is like a woman now. He's a, he's trans. All of SEAL Team Six is trans. <laughs> all trans. That's how they got into. Yeah. They were in Pakistan, right. fucking lady boys, and yeah. killed Bin Laden by mistake. That's right. how it happened. Yeah. Can you imagine them just like breaking into that <laughs> compound, just in high heels, going up the, <laughs> clumbering up the steps? Come on, girls, he's up here. I found him. He's in the back bedroom. Come on, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, Trans Seal Team Six. Dude, yeah. Genuinely, one of the scariest things: just six armed trannies kicking yeah. in a door. At well, 2 I mean, imagine you're just some Muslim extremist and you already think America is the great Satan. And then they just send like just a checklist of every abomination your religion can name. <laughs> 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 just like served up the entire menu, just barreling down the street, six foot three, F cup tits, giant, yeah. giant calves. <laughs> Hey, can I have some sour Skittles? Sorry, it's really not up to me. Well, who's it up to? The sour man. <laughs> Feel the rainbow. Taste the rainbow. My name is Steve Weller. I'm the BK Chicken Changer. It's my job to get BK Chicken Fries in the car when it comes in for a pit stop. I grab 12 pieces of all-white meat, get the sauce open, make sure he's got it going. I wish we had had that back when I was racing. They used to hand me the chicken on a pole through the window. Now, this was quite an invention we had here. You see how we put this chicken on that pole? And then they'd run that car in there real fast, and they'd just step back and stick a chicken right in there in your face. Oh, it's a mess. Then they came up with a drumstick. They usually pass it through to the driver through the window, and he'd grab it the best way he could and try to munch it away. Get the grease all over your hands, and it goes right to the steering wheel. Well, then they incorporated the uh, chicken sandwich, and, uh, you know, that didn't work out at all. Absolutely love it. It's a great job. Can't, can't ask for more. You got to be in first place all the time. Chicken fries are number one. You got to feed the need, the need for chicken fries. 
descendants of a secret legacy. Sons of Ipswich. Granted a world of untold power. Imagine having the ability to do anything you want. But their darkest secret. Have you met Chase? Hey, man. Will unleash an evil. Something weird is happening. I'm scared. I'll protect you. That will tear their brotherhood apart. What do you want? Your power. From the producers of Underworld. They're dead. The Covenant. Where did PG-13 in theaters everywhere September 8th? <laughs> I'll do I, every show that every podcast that I do. It's like how many times I'm like, oh fuck, I haven't been listening to a word anyone's been saying for like 45 seconds. Yeah, it's yeah so we're all just sitting in our homes, and there's something weird about that. Well, that's the problem. When you're not going to work, you don't right. feel inspired. You don't feel like you're getting up and doing something. You feel like you're sitting around. I just, I mean, I've been just sitting around getting fat. Yeah, I've been playing video games. I'm. We are all becoming. The it's, fucking yeah. losers that we fucking Lewis, complain and, and about on the, the internet. Reality is you don't have discipline with your diet. I've told you, I've tried to instruct you a million times as to how to have discipline and follow. Right. A I'm getting in pretty good protein. shape. Lewis is like, we're all becoming fat and shitty. We're all yeah. eating fat. I'm like, well, I don't know about that. Nick, you're First the only all, psychopath it's, it's Lewis, that's getting your, in better it's shape. It's your lack of discipline. Be Lewis, if you had Magic Spoon cereal, <laughs> which is promo code Tim is Dillon. That, is that the it's, zero carb shit? Yes, yeah, it's a zero carb keto cereal that's kept me in shape me for 30 the, years. The keto cereal, please. Uh, I need that keto cereal. It's gone? Okay. I bought one. What the fuck yeah. was the name of it? Dude, it was the nastiest shit I've ever had it's, in my it's entire It's the best shit I've ever had, but I put it in my Not ass. Not yours. I didn't have yours. Yeah. <laughs> I stuff it in my ass and I come, and then you don't want to eat. You put it then in you don't want to eat. And you go magic spoon, <laughs> dude. It's a uh, oh cereal school. Cereal school. I spent, dude. I saw, dude. Brian, please pull up cereal school. Like their ads, they look so good. I was like, dude, finally, I get a cereal and I get a zero carbs. Zero. Yeah. I was, I spent like seventy dollars on two boxes of this shit. Because the thing with Magic Spoon is it's good. You start chewing it, and then all of a sudden, there's like a fatty paste in your mouth. And you're like, because <laughs> all of a sudden, you realize <laughs> it's not like, for the first couple of bites, you're like, oh, it's cereal. But then you start going, oh, no, it's, I'm eating like a liver. It's a t- yeah, is it flavored it. with that weird, it's not even like, whatever some weird foreign fucking Nick, of course you don't, because you're not fat. This is for fat people. This is not for, this is for fat people who are never serious about being on a diet. <laughs> if you're craving cereal, you're a fat yeah. fuck. You're yeah. never going to have abs. Yeah. There's no person out there that's serious about being on a diet that goes, but I, I, here's the thing. I have to have chocolate cereal every morning <laughs> or, or all bets are off. I'm serious, but all bets are off if I can't have apple pie flavored cereal. I just right. need it. I just need it. I just Anybody got the time? He's missing his favorite TV show. Ouch. Tonight's the season finale. Are you considered a digital video recorder from Cox? We have one and we never miss a thing. You okay there, Jer? Call 304 Cox or visit us at aboutcox.com to learn more. Hi, honey. You've got to check this out. What? What are we listening to? I had digital phone service installed today. It sounds just like before. I know, but it's going to save us a ton of money. With Cox Digital Telephone, you'll save big every month. Keep your same phone number and get your favorite calling features. Just pay less. That does sound good. You should hear the upstairs phone. with untold power formed a covenant of silence one family disappeared without a trace until now they're heading for the cliffs they're going over that's a thousand foot drop see ya suckers 
they're here. Who are they? Don't know much about them, but I intend to find out. Sarah, this is Caleb Danvers. He's hot, huh? <laughs> they are the descendants of a secret legacy. Come on, Caleb. It's not like he's gonna kill us. Yet. We're into a world of untold power. Look at that. But their darkest secret was never meant to be shared. What is this covenant? Imagine having the ability to do anything you want, but the more you use the power, the more it weakens you. Now, a member of the fifth family has returned. Have you met Chase? Hey, man. Hey. He just transferred in. To seek revenge. He can't beat me. So he got. And destroy their covenant. Something's wrong. I can feel it. I'm scared. Don't be. I'm here to protect you. Hello? You never should have involved her in this. Your powers are nothing compared with his. What's happening to us? Don't be afraid. It's going to stop. What do you want? Your power. I cannot save. He's using her against all of us. of Underworld. They're dead. The Covenant. Rated PG-13 in theaters September 8th. I'm Steve-O. Welcome to Snow Circus. And now the incredible Ryan Simonetti with the face jump. It's so funny. Like the thing that I miss is like eighty-five, fifteen ground beef. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why? Why can't you have that? You can't have fifteen percent of fat in the beef. Yeah, because it like blows your your fat macros for. Go meat. fuck yourself, dude! I hate you, dude. You gotta get twenty percent. I get meat. I get meat with seventy percent fat and thirty percent meat. Yeah. Hey, I've it's, been there. Look, I got... Here's the question: What are we all living for? That's the real. You know. Yeah, that's well, the real just, question. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be efficient. You know, I'm trying to eventually get closer to the source and becoming an elderly Japanese woman. Who <laughs> speaks Mandarin? I'm trying to weigh ten pounds, and yeah, I consume like seventeen calories a day, and I live. The to, only clothing you need is a sandal. You're right. I just wear one sandal, and I live to yeah. the age of two hundred and thirty-eight. Will you do come down? You'll do come down on Zoom if you leave, if you move. Yeah, I mean, I get. I mean, who knows? It's like if I can get a house and land, it's like how long am I going to be doing? Fuck <laughs> a couple slaves. Yeah, fuck that. I mean, yeah. It's like, I, yeah, if I get a, if I get my plantation, I'm, look, I'm trying to buy Monticello. <laughs> yeah. You know, if, I, if I get, if that, I got a house right. and a couple of Africans, I don't need to do no podcast. Yeah, if I, if I get Monticello and I get my my vineyard started, <laughs> I, I figure first year maybe we'll be making maybe two million. Yeah. Maybe six million dollars off the slave labor alone. Yeah, which I would would rent out, and then part of it I would keep for myself, use the profits to fund my my my, my vineyard. The great so, thing is, you sound like Kevin Spacey, and that's genuinely a conversation he's had. You yeah, know about right. sex slaves. You know. Yeah. He, well, yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> he does the uh, what's the character's name? Frank. Uh, Francis Underwood. Frank Underwood. Frank Underwood. Well. Yeah. 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 You know, I say I'd maybe have the afternoon and uh, uh, spoil myself with a four-year-old, I believe. <laughs> yeah. four I'll take a couple of 13-year-olds camping, Claire. Yeah. What's I, wrong with that, Claire? I've, I've never seen this show. I've only seen that weird video. I love Robin Wright Penn. When they asked her about all the shit, she became her character, which is like this, you know, narcissistic, you know, scheming lunatic. Like, they asked her about uh, Kevin Spacey, and she's like, you know, I never really knew the man. I just, uh, yeah. you know, I don't know him. We don't, yeah. uh, he's a stranger to me. It was like just a fascinating, like, oh, you are, you are Claire Underwood now. Yeah. You saw that uh, Biden gave back Louis's donation? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Biden, who, by the way, is Rapes women. More, more of a rapist <laughs> yeah. than Louis. Than Louis, also, who will ever be. Biden's the accusations against Biden, which are more credible than the accusations against Kavanaugh, which is not to say that Kavanaugh is innocent. But right. uh, but that the Tara Reid allegations have more 
face value credibility to them than the Blazy Four yes. accusations are also yeah. worse accusations. I mean, right. The, the, he's a senator. He's a senator that fingered yeah. him at gunpoint. I, that last detail, I might be adding a little bit of editorial flourish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As a journal. Yeah. He's a he's a he's a senator who fingered a woman while the towers were falling. While the yeah. towers were burning, he said, yeah. We're doing this to save building seven. Right. He's like, I need to I need to check your pussy for chemicals. Yeah. For nine eleven chemicals. Do you think they force him to drop out and then run a dream ticket of the meatball king, Andrew yeah. Cuomo, and then Michelle Obama? The dream ticket is Andrew Cuomo and the Blue Angels. for me because after the club scene i'm all about the bacon scene the sausage scene and the moons over miami scene mm. how about the extreme grand slam scene just 5.99 denny's works for me hey huh. is that skittles bubblegum yep with all the different flavors yep can I have some? Nope. Skittles bubble gum with five flavors in every pack. Inflate the rainbow, taste the rainbow. is made for guys to help keep them acne free with a cool sensation and smell because girls like guys who make an effort oxy chill factor now in a new face scrub oxy chill factor is made for guys to help them stay acne free with a cool sensation and smell so your face stays clean and cool even when you're not oxy chill factor cool intense acne fighting power now in a new face scrub that's good. Now try the first one. Oh. No, I don't like that. We'll try the next one. Mm. No, that I like. People <laughs> love Altoid Sours. Will you? I will tell you this young, Peter, about the spicy Southwest breakfast burrito. The chipotle sauce and the jalapeno strips, it separates the boys from the men. I'm not a boy. I didn't say you were. You said boys and men. I tend you to put... talk with my hands, Pete. I don't know. I just say you it separates the boys See, there he looks... from the men. Exactly. Yeah. Spicy Southwest breakfast burrito. New at Sonic. With crispy jalapeno strips and a spicy chipotle sauce, it's breakfast fired up. Try one with your favorite drink because Sonic is your ultimate drink stop. Who, uh, who accused Biden of rape? I don't even understand what happened. Tara Reid accused Biden of rape in the early 90s. And like the, the New York Times just the last... The dated Carson Daly? Yes, yes. So the, uh, just last week, she fucking said that... Um, uh, uh, or New York Times said that they... Like, oh, we found no credibility to her accusations or any pattern of behavior. I mean, did, did the New York Times basically acquitted Joe Biden. They did their own investigation and decided... They affirmatively announced that she's lying. Lewis, you never heard of 
Yeah, you, you never heard about this? On the, I heard about it. I didn't, really, I didn't really pay attention this to was, it. Would, I just you remember all she men. did the show Taradice? You remember Taradice? Yeah. Tara Reid no. did that show Taradice? No. Yeah. This is, when it, this is when it supposedly happened with Vibe. Yeah. It was in between the scary movies. <laughs> between scary movie two and three, whichever movie she... he just he walked on set during scary movie three <laughs> he started to rape <laughs> he started fingering her at gunpoint yeah he was, was fingering this, her at gunpoint was while she was filming her, the show Paradise before her botched uh, implants yeah because that's when she was hot <laughs> it's so funny to imagine like what what story is materializing in Lewis's brain right now is the truth. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what, how reality is being shaped in his plastic mind. <laughs> Lewis is what? much more likely to vote for Biden now that he's raped Tara Reid. Yeah. yeah. What do you think? Of, what do you think about the reality of a a senator raping a reality star, movie star? Mm -hmm. Um. You know, I got to be honest with you. I uh, I don't really give a fuck. Yeah. I, I think that probably anybody who's a president of the United States has probably done the minimum a crime as bad as rape. As three rapes. You think everyone has been... Obama's done three rapes. Obama? Yeah, probably. I don't know, dude. Yeah. You don't think Obama's done some evil shit? I think he's raped dudes. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, he was even while he was president, continuing to um, uh, work as a gay. Um, that's, yes. that's been proven. Is he worked. There was this guy, God, Larry Johnson, that used yeah. to smoke crack in a limo, and Obama <laughs> stuck him off. This is this is this is the news. Larry Johnson would pull up outside the White House. Larry Johnson would rent out Obama to rich Saudis. <laughs> would have sex with them. Rich Saudis would have piss parties, and Obama would come and he'd be a golden fountain for the Saudi royal family because Larry Johnson. What what broke it. what Obama did? It's like the whole. I love the hubris of people on the left to say that the right has no sense of humor. When if, right. you, if you can read a single Obama conspiracy theory without hilarious, like, just weeping. <laughs> Michelle Obama is yeah. a man that Barack <laughs> met. Then, <laughs> during college, in my Facebook groups, with every picture of us of Michelle Obama, with every fold in her dress circled, to be yeah. the implication being that it's an outline of a penis. That it's a sometimes it's by her knees. Yeah, it'll be up here. It'll be like yeah. what is, she'll be like yeah. waving to people, and they're like, "Is this a penis? Yeah, is this her the chest penis? Thing Not only does she have a penis, it's in a, she has a thirteen inch cock. <laughs> yes, a, a forty five inch penis that loops around their armpit." And you can tell by the lighting that she's erect, waiting and, to stop her her this, boy husband. Yeah. So I mean, that's what it is. The Obamas were gay escorts. <laughs> I mean, like, what, what is it like? If that were true, it would be if, great. But then, what would happen? I mean, like, right. what, like, what, like, does the Constitution say? Oh, by the way, the yeah. president isn't allowed to have. A, a husband, a secret husband that has a 45 inch penis. <laughs> well, you know what it was, Nick? I think it was the escorting. Like, it wasn't only that Michelle was a man and that Barack was smoking crack and sucking dick. It was that there was money being exchanged after these behaviors. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> Love to show you the world's next great video game. There's only one problem. You haven't created it yet. 
You've played them, now you can make them with DeVry's new bachelor's degree program in game and simulation programming. It's classrooms and labs where you actually create video games. Games like you'll find when you log on to DeVryPowerUp15.com. You'll learn more about this exciting degree program and get free video game demos from Vivendi Universal Games. It's time to take it to the next level. You can earn a four-year degree in less than three with classes that start right away. And since it's DeVry, you know you'll get this and even more of this. Call 1-877-DEVRY-15 or go to DeVryPowerUp15.com for your free video game demos. But do it now, because when you're a gamer, you know what happens when you stand still. So call or log on for your free video game demos. It's right now, and it's here at DeVry. Mmm, gosh, I'm so glad I met you this week. Your island culture is amazing. Even these juicy tropical candies. Heather, I have a confession. These are those new tropical starbursts. You can buy them anywhere. Is there anything else you want to tell me, Tashi? No, that's pretty much it. Let's go snorkel. Is that your car? Nah, oh, man, it's my mom's. Check it. Never give up the choice. Nike Air Max 180 and the Nike House of Hoops. Only at Foot Lock. On in jet. Vicky. Kevin. Mindy. Hey, give it to me. Oh, mm -hmm. Give it to me. Mm -hmm. Good evening. I'm Kevin Kearns. And I'm Vicky Ferraro. Welcome to News Time. Our first story, Kevin has hair plugs. Oh. Back to you, Kevin. <gasps> this just in. The new mint mocha mulatte has arrived at Dairy Queen, the latest addition to the mulatte family. Yeah. Are you moving, Nick? What's going on with your, your apartment? My, no, no, this well, is just, a comedy. Yeah. Nick lives in a comedy club. Yeah, this this is just just live. It's just a bunch of tools and files <laughs> all over the fucking yeah. Room. <laughs> He's building a stage there. Yeah, this there's that's literally... the thing. If, if you built a stage in your house and and said to all the comedians, Hey guys, we have a club in my house, just come on. Yeah, these psychopaths just... we know would show up at your house and do their act under your stage. Yeah, this why just... not do uh, like a drive in movie theater for uh, what, like for comedy. Because it's just an oh, incredibly dumb idea. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's like, you mean, I think, like, you know what's people the laugh in their cars? About podcasting is like, it doesn't require, there's no it, like discernible podcast talent. It's just that you don't shut the fuck up. So the dumber you are, the actually like the better you are at it because yeah. it's like, <laughs> that's how I thrive. 75 like you can have, you can do four good podcast episodes and attract an audience. And then after that, the successful shows are the ones where then 95% of the audience only listens because they hate you. And they, yeah. and like they, they just don't right. they just you want to sit there and get mad at you mispronouncing words or fucking getting some detail about something wrong. So the dumber you are and the louder you are, the better you are at it. And yeah. that's why Lewis, you're so successful. But now yeah. you've, 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 confused your one success as i'm good at business ideas and you say things like why don't we have drive-in stand-up comedy clubs like, yeah, why, don't, why don't we have a yeah. yeah regular comedy clubs which didn't require drive-in access to are already failing and gone but now let's add a vehicle element and a whole bunch of equipment that's Hear necessary. Me out, dude. Every, we can get Bluetooth headphones. Yeah, every now there's going to be huge if you problems. lewis if i handed you a million bucks tomorrow and said Make Caroline's because it's a big room. I'm not even going to say like the stand, smaller room. Make a club like Caroline's. You can see 350 people, which maybe could turn a little bit of a profit by making the seat spaced out. What would you do? Because I thought about this. What would you do? How would you do it? Because if everyone's in a mask, that sucks because no, you can't hear them laughing. You can hear them laughing if they're wearing a mask. Can you? Yeah. Why not? You hear people talking. 
Give people laughing. That's not an issue. It's weird. Uh, I think people, the same way you get used to noise in the back of the room, like if you have like a, a loud bar or you do a bar show and there's like a TV on, yeah. you sort of tune yeah. it out the after a while. The same way you get used to being molested is yeah. the way you'll be used to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they yeah. Eventually, comedians will just be in a permanent fugue where they think they're doing well, and really they're all <laughs> right. <laughs> they're yeah, we have enough problem. people that think they're killing when people can give them feedback. Right. Well, the problem with it with a drive-in would probably be the fact that you can't hear the laughter. The whole point of drive-in movie theaters. That's was, a big problem, Lewis. The whole point of drive-in movie theaters <laughs> is it was a place to get pussy back when it was illegal to do that until you were thirty-seven years old. Right. Like, she's just people trying to get a hand job. Right. That's it. And now that like teenagers are allowed to suck each other off and get their dicks cut off on reality shows on TLC, there's no right. reason to go do it in the privacy of a drive-in movie theater. And also Derek Gaines is going to call you out and be like, look at this motherfucker getting jerked off. Yeah. And then it's going to ruin it. <laughs> mm -hmm. His penis kind of reminds me of like a, like a, like a spaceship. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I'm talking about how a spaceship, because sometimes a spaceship will be like, you know, it'll be like, boo, 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 boo. But some, then other times, you know, it's like it's like talking backwards to you. Like when you play backwards <laughs> and it's like Satan giving you messages in your head. And you're like, Derek, are you? Derek Gaines is, is <laughs> okay. me and Nick watched him do that. His, his bit about biscuits is maybe the funniest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, he's funny and he crushes. He's amazing. Derek, he's amazing. Yeah. yeah and he's a good murder. guy. And he's a good guy. He's a great but, dude. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, if he, you stop and analyze the logic of any one of his bits, it's like this is schizophrenia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. He's like, uh, well, you You ever notice how uh, when you go on a date with a girl, it's kind of like eating pancakes? Like, what, what the fuck are you talking about? My favorite thing he the said was he like, talks? he was saying something about, he had an Uber driver named Ebony. Yeah. Or no, Ebenezer. An Uber driver named Ebenezer was really <laughs> black. And he's like, God, he's like, that motherfucker wasn't even Ebony. He was Ebenezer. And it was like, I was like, this is an interesting way to get there. It's an interesting. <laughs> Hey, what if, what if this rainbow doesn't exist and it's just in our imagination? Believe the rainbow. Taste the rainbow. If you were alone on the moon, how would you charge your iPod? Introducing the iSupercharger. It's the 4-in-1 iPod charger that recharges any iPod wherever you are. iSupercharger works with all these different iPod models in your car, at home, by your computer, or anywhere at all. Taking a drive? Simply plug the iSupercharger into your lighter outlet. Connect your iPod and you'll be fully charged in no time. Staying at home? Just pop out the AC plug, plug it into an outlet, and your iPod will charge while you read or watch TV. At a computer, simply pull out this USB connector, plug it into the computer, and you can charge your iPod while you continue to work. But here's the best part. Even if you're in the park, at the beach, or completely away from civilization, it also works with any 9-volt battery. It plugs in here, and your iSupercharger will charge your iPod no matter where you are. And you can even play your iPod while it's charging. Now you can take that long Sunday drive or hike in the woods from sunup to sunset. No matter where you are, you'll always be able to charge your iPod. It'll play up to 18 hours from one 9-volt battery. Why buy a separate car charger, AC charger, and computer charger for your iPod? iSupercharger does it all. Plus, it charges your iPod by working off a simple 9-volt battery. And it's yours for two easy payments of only $19.95. But wait, call now and we'll include this iSuper speaker absolutely free. Just attach it to your headphone jack, and the dual speakers let you enjoy true stereo sound without your headphones. iSuper speaker also works with mp3 and cd players now everyone can listen together and it's free you get everything for two easy payments of only 1995 so order now to order your i supercharger have your credit card ready and call toll free 1-800-232-0400 remember you'll also receive the i super speaker absolutely free so call toll free 1-800-232-0400 now to order Where, are you going to move, Lewis? Are you, are you done with New York? What makes a decision? What's your breaking point? 
Uh, it really would be Beatrice. You know, if she if she was interested in moving out of New York City, I would definitely consider it. Um, well, she's not gonna have her job, right? Or no, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, she works in a a bar, um, but she's got money invested. She's got like she's doing fine. She'll figure it yeah. out. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's it, dude. It's a hard thing. Like, I don't want to fucking raise my kid in the the city. It sucks, dude. Just even when it's when it's normal, it sucks raising a kid here. Like right. my kid, I can't let my kid go out for like a minute. If he, if I let my kid go outside for one minute, he's well, dead. he's four. You wish shouldn't let him go out anywhere. Like but when I was if seven, you live in the I suburbs, could go out my front door in the suburbs. Yeah, but uh, you can't let a five year old in the suburbs just roam around eat. Like you still have to barrack. If you live in the suburbs, you can let your seven year old go out the front door to your next door neighbor's place. No, that stopped in the eighties because all those kids ended up on Epstein's island. Yeah, a <laughs> yes. lot. You you really shouldn't just let your kid run around. Right. The the mental Lewis is illness, like if I lived in the suburbs, James would have a job. He'd be working. The <laughs> mental illness that me and Tim have was literally caused by people letting their kids walk around and do whatever they want in the 1980s. Yeah, if that didn't happen. There wouldn't be like a fucking pedophile buffet among. The I other walked guys. around trying to get raped. Nobody raped me, and that's why I'm the way I am. Yeah, one guy did try to rape me once. He was like an old guy who like told us to come swimming in his pool, and then I told my mom we we're gonna go swimming in this old guy's pool, and she beat the shit out of me. She was just mad that he knew someone with a pool. Yeah, she was furious. Yeah, um, yeah, but that's why when, where I, when I grew up, we would go out in the morning and come home when the street lights came on so even if you were kidnapped at like 10 a.m when you were like your mom wasn't even gonna know it until six or seven o'clock right and that's it like i remember being maybe four or five and just being out like being completely out like just going off in the woods and like building a tree house like nobody would check on me or anything you can't do that now not really no, you, I don't think a four-year-old can just be out in the woods, as per what you just said. <laughs> can a four-year-old just go in the woods and like figure out a way to build a treehouse and live on off the land? Yeah, no. Yeah. yeah, that's why I want property, and then just you know knock up some dumb bitch, and then just have a kid I speak Chinese to, and teach him how to make rope and shit. And the fucking, You're the dude. Just give him a bunch of property. You know, that'd be sick. Let him beat the shit out of your chick. Yeah, sure. Let the kid beat up, you know, whatever. Just fucking give him an ATV. That'd be sick, dude. I would love to just give a child, like, an ATV to ride around. Give him a BB gun for his second birthday? Mm -hmm. Give him a real gun. Why, why fuck around BBs? <coughs> did you have a BB gun growing up? Me? No. I think a friend of mine did. Yeah. Yeah, we would, uh, we would get... No, no way would my mom let me have, me have a BB gun. Um, yeah, my mom didn't give a shit. We had 10 pump BB guns where you'd like pump it 10 times and then shoot it. Yeah. You would, we'd have wars where we would pump it two times and, uh, just have BB gun wars. But by the, by five shots into it, you're just pumping it like eight times, putting holes in each other. This is like, you know, that game you would play where your mom would go to a pharmacy and you and her would have BB guns and you'd point them at the <laughs> pharmacist and Give then she'd go with the money. Yeah, it was a fucking a fun game, man. You can't do that anymore. Dude, I did. I actually one time got. We went to Shoprite, which is a shot like a you know a supermarket, and we had we were playing a BB gun war behind the supermarket, and we decided we wanted to go buy sodas. So it's just three fucking Puerto Rican kids. We take our rifles, we put them down our legs in our pants, and we go into the supermarket. And there's just like security watching us do this. They thought they were being robbed, dude. The fuck it. They start following us around the supermarket. The cops show up. And I just started running, and I'm like a fat kid. Anyway, so I had the, the, the rifle in my leg, and I just I pulled the rifle out of my leg. I mean, I was almost shot to death. There was like eight cops there. It was so close to me just being fucking dead. It was, it was so – I deserved to be dead, to be honest. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Is the big head boy, Shin Chan, very famous in the world for his popular TV program, Shin Chan. Mama! Many are loving him, also adults. <laughs> uh -huh. Includes ladies and gentlemen. Shin Chan, sausage eater, showing his pat pat to everyone. Lesbians! Meow! Hot damn! See Shin Chan on the Adult Swim TV for you. Okay. <laughs> Witness, you may proceed. With my circle, all tell customers can call any number on any network for free. Your Honor, 
My clients want their identities protected from this my circle. Call any network for free. <laughs> what were you thinking? We were thinking our customers would like it. I object! I bet you do. My Circle from Alta Wireless, America's largest network. You choose the people you call for free. Any number, any network. Gamefly, our passion for gaming has led us to rent games differently. We think different is better. Choose from thousands of the latest and classic video games delivered right to your door. Keep them as long as you want with no late fees. Then send them back in our prepaid envelope. People think we're crazy to rent games for as low as $9.95 for the first month. We think we're visionaries. Our vision? Make renting easier. Different? Maybe. Smarter? We think so. Go to Gamefly.com and start renting differently. <laughs> Rated E to T. What was uh what was the closest to death you've ever been, Tim? Uh yesterday. No. Um <laughs> yes. Yesterday I almost killed myself. I've never no, felt, I um I've never felt I, close to death. I don't I fell off been. a bike. I was coming down a hill and I I, I jammed on the I, I jammed on the, the, the brakes and I flew off a bike and I fucked up my arms i got like pebbles in my arms yeah i had a helmet on but if i didn't have a helmet on it would have died but that's one of the only times i legit was blacked out and then was in shock and didn't quite know what happened i guess that would be the closest you'd feel to like death but i don't know yeah i mean i've gotten i've been knocked out yeah um but i've never um i put my head through a windshield one time but it's like i don't like i mean i've never been in a point where i fear like oh my life's going to end like a near-death experience what, why had you put your head yeah. through a windshield the car accident i didn't have a seatbelt on yeah yeah it was like a head-on collision i fucking came up <laughs> I was like, what? you start headbutting windshields yeah yeah, yeah. what well, is that the closest you were to death lewis that's hard to believe <clears throat> i think the closest to death ever i almost drowned once uh, there's a, a place called the Deep Hole where I grew up, Rockland County, and it was like essentially just like these cliffs that you would jump off, and it had been raining for days before, and it was crazy like rapids like rushing in, and I was like, oh yeah, I'll still jump in, and when I jumped in, the waterfall just pushed me down. I mean, I don't even know how far. It just felt like it just kept pushing, and kept pushing, and I fucking you just like trying to swim to the top, and you're seeing the top, and it's just not coming, to the point where I was like, I felt like I was about to take my last like you know try to take a breath and then I just I reached the top and it was fucking that was scary as shit dude yeah that was really scary um but yeah beyond that I mean I don't know I mean probably a bunch dude we used to fucking we were crazy I would never let my kid do the shit I, we would go and grab on the on a rollerblade we'd grab on the back of a bus and just go like 50 miles an hour down the highway on the back of a bus yeah, but your kid's doing other kinds of dangerous shit, you know? Like, he's on his iPad being tracked by the government. <laughs> yeah, like, James James has a lot of alt accounts, and he's yeah. fucking trading cryptocurrencies, and he's right. doing all kinds of dangerous you're, things. You're, James is engaging in the danger of being an American citizen on the precipice of total <laughs> authoritarian fashion. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what, what James is doing. Yeah, the back of the bus is America going off a cliff, and the rollerblades right. are... <laughs> Are the public's complicity in Google's uh, a panopticon takeover of, uh, of social life as we know it? Tim dropped his camera. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be funny if the camera moved and there's just like a wall, child. Wall, <laughs> bullets, yeah, just chained. Yeah. <laughs> what if I? What if? What if the camera moved and I was just sitting in like a sea of pasta in like a in like a pot? Yeah. Of, and I was like holding on to a ravioli.
Wish you could wake up in a new place with a new career? You can. Why not take a look into an affiliate of Le Cordon Bleu Schools North America? You can get a fresh start in a fresh city in the in-demand culinary industry. You could have fun working at restaurants, hotels, and resorts in some of the best cities in the world. Call now for a complimentary brochure. Operators are standing by. Call toll-free 800-719-8162. Call now. Flat out's back to blow everything else off the track. Take on your friends or compete online with new souped-up muscle cars to race and wreck. Plus, all new driver thrashing bonus games. Flat out 2, same full throttle action. Way more destruction. Ready to fatigue. Yeah. <laughs> God damn, I miss ravioli. That's something I, I cannot wait to have. I got 24 well, more. Why can't you have it? Here's the deal. This is what I've learned about dieting, and I've learned about it from a lot of overweight Long Island women. Yeah. You can eat anything you want. You just have to be accountable. Yeah, so if you have a chocolate cake later in the day, you just have to have a glass of water. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, you just got to be accountable. Just, yeah, just I will. be deliberate. Once I'm done with this shit and I'm like, you know, emaciated and fucking, you know, I look you know, like I, the machinist. Yeah, no, I mean, I probably will. I probably literally will look like the machinist at the end of this fucking. Is this. Stav losing? Is he on the thing with you? No, nah, he's not doing it. But, um, uh, you know what? I, cause I remember as a kid, you would read accounts of like, I remember reading about like, um, the siege of Stalingrad and the liberation of like the, uh, Nazi death camps. And I remember hearing about um, like the Allied how, soldiers, the Allied how soldiers, thin, yeah. how thin they were. But the Allied yeah. soldiers, as part of their like kit, they would have a bar of chocolate, and they would give chocolate to the like besieged, like either in Stalingrad or or maybe it was like you know the death camps. But I just remember a story of like somebody who had been starved to death getting a piece of chocolate during the Holocaust. And I remember thinking as a child, wow. I wish I was in the Holocaust because that's probably <laughs> the best tasting piece of chocolate in the world. And yeah. I, I could never, I could never, I like, it just, it created in my mind this appreciation for like the single square of a Hershey's bar and yeah. how, how good that must taste and how yeah. valuable that would be after being, after being like kept in, in it just imprisoned. Well, that's a new yeah. diet. That's a new diet that's coming out. It's called the Holocaust diet. It's called and, the Siege of Stalingrad. Yeah. <laughs> and what it'll be is it's just a labor camp for a year. You simulate the conditions of a labor camp. Yeah. And then it, all, when you're on the edge of death, you get a, just one square of chocolate. And you yeah. keep it's going. It's the South Beach diet. It's the South Beach of Pyongyang. Uh, of, <laughs> of, <laughs> of Pyongyang. <laughs> yeah. There was yeah. a book when I was a kid called uh, Slake's Limbo. And it was about a kid who was like, had an abusive household and he like ran away from home and he would, he lived in the subways and would like find newspapers on the platform and resell them to people. Like people that used their subway and left or use their newspaper and left them on the platform. And this became like my fantasy from the time I was like nine to the time I was like 13 to like run away from home and live as like a, a sewer rat. Mm -hmm. You can still do it. I want to do it. a long boring day i need to put a little spice in my night and generate some heat i just pick up my phone for a crazy hot time you can try it free right now get some sugar and spice in your night it's easy just pick up your phone and call now Five oh four six two zero forty four forty four. Come on down to TimAndEric.com for all your latest Tim and Eric merchandising needs. You're going to love these bargains. We're slashing prices to add to your cart. And that's why we've started Hats Off, Rats Off Tuesday. Buy something we made up like Rats Off to you. If you order any Rats Off deal or Hats Off to you t-shirt,
temperatures between the hours of 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. on any Tuesday, your shipping spray. We got Billy Williams t-shirts, Rats Off to You t-shirts, Hats Off to You t-shirts, Pipe Camp t-shirts. At Shimonark.com, we don't just care about low prices, we care about cup house. Go ahead, I dare you to be like my dad. have landed. Go ahead and buy a Mary News counter. We don't care. We'll give you a free sticker and pen. Twelve months of glossy photos and fun facts about Jan and Wayne. Everyone likes stickers and pin packs. Don't take our word for it. Run, don't walk under Tim and Eric Go ahead, do an Alta Vista search. Just type in Tim and Eric t-shirts. Log on. Add to cart. Totally paid. <laughs> You're shipping free. Meet Nancy a widow without a care. She deals with neighbors with grace and flair. When Nancy knocks, she smiles a lot. Cause what you want is what she's got. With a dime to spare. Cause she's Nancy. Suburbanite Nancy. And you'll see. She talks a lot. She yells a lot. And now she even sells some pot. It's Nancy. Dealing weed on the street. Weeds, an all new season only on Showtime. Yeah, I so want to deal with Revlon. To have these conversations when it's like those people who uh, finally did have their house in those places that are now being foreclosed on because they lost their job. And we've spent the last like decade in New York, enjoying New York for what it is. And we're like, ah, I guess I'll buy these people's house at full of <laughs> yes. <market rate."> yeah, <laughs> Well, you know, <laughs> okay. we're so entitled. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I guess I'll just go ahead and steal their home. Well, the dude, I was who- I playing Grand Theft Auto Five right now, yeah. and I just started playing a few days. Do you play online, Nick? No, I mean, I played I played half the campaign. I've been working through Grand Theft Auto Five for. Was it like almost a decade now? I don't even know. It, it must be an old game. I just started playing it though, and this is how fucking what garbage I am. I just bought my first house in the game, uh-huh. and it almost made me emotional. It was such an amazing moment. Like I was like, I, I stepped in, I sat down on my couch, and it was like a real fucking moment. And that's all I want. I want to own a house so badly. The idea of even owning a house as a child was such a far off thought. Yeah. It was never gonna happen. Well, it's also not really even worth it. You don't think so? No, really. Thanks, Tim. It's fucking expensive, and then it's like, you know, I mean, it's a 30-year loan, you know? It's like with your career, it's like, how long is this going to fucking last? It's like, what if this dries oh, up? Oh, my career? Well, any any of ours. I mean, especially, like, as a fucking comedian, you know? I mean, I, no, you know, no one can predict corona or whatever, but it's like, you can't just assume that you're going to be making the money you are now forever. Do you know what else I could have predicted? It's not like being a fucking salesman, you know, or some like some other career where you work for a company and it's like stable income. You're self-employed. You know what else I could have predicted, Nick? What? Driving comedy clubs. Driving comedy clubs, yeah. Which, Nobody. But you did predict them and it won't happen. I, invented- I just love the idea of like Lewis sitting down and being like, it's a drive-in <laughs> Yeah, comedy club and some <laughs> Italian guy be like, yeah, like it's the fifties. Yeah. Well, so then there's co- like comedy there. Hey, you yeah. know what I was thinking would be a good idea? Maybe we get little brick ovens and we put them in the car. <laughs> Every the car gets oven, their own pizza oven. But there's a hose that goes to the exhaust. And the it's exhaust a- cooks the pizza <laughs> in the car. <cup. laughs> and people get to watch the dough rise they when watch they watch the, the video. And but it's it's good for the environment because the yeah. car's exhaust is being reused to make the pizza pie right there in the vehicle. And I then you watch you the take comedians. A, take a full, you watch the comedians. You take a little nap. I think he should yeah. open every type of business. <laughs> you take a little nap. You got the fucking exhaust keeping you warm. You you nice and if, if you wanted to live there, you could pay to live there. If you want to just live there in your car, you pay a little extra. You live. Yeah. You get you charge them rent to live there. Now it's an apartment <laughs> complex too, so you get the tax right. <laughs> I've always been good at business. I just I'm good at it. It's something that's the way my mind works. Yeah. No, it's a lot of doing this move. It's a lot of just fucking this hey. Not, hey, what? You see fucking Chris Italia as a kid delivering uh newspapers. <laughs> He's like, what if we give a free slice of pizza? What yeah, if we yeah. newspaper. What if we? Yeah, we put a big uh, Chilean sea bass for free in every <laughs> newspaper. 
<laughs> that when people go to read the news and they're like, whoa, what is this? There's fish also what is this free? Beautiful filet of fish. And up front, we're going to lose about $47 per newspaper. <laughs> Here's the Cubs that'll survive. <laughs> <laughs> up front, we're yeah. up front, we're losing well, we got to invest. You got to make an investment in, in yourself. Because we're going to spend money to make money. Uh,